very happy that you guys are here, mainly because it means that you were able to avoid all the bicycles outside. Uh, you know, my impression was that the Dutch people are driving the bicycles very similarly to the way that Italians are driving cars. So I'm very happy that you're all alive. Um, I've been with Oliacots for 19 years, roughly, I would say probably 25 years in the industry. Uh, I'm based out of Boston, Massachusetts, and responsible for the global relationship with uh, Genesis. Um, ju just for curiosity, how many of you heard about Oliacots? That's nice, I guess 60%. Uh, so that, that's, that's very good. So we are a publicly traded company, 700 employees, global. Uh, both Interactive Intelligence and Genesis have been OEMing audio codes reselling it for their voice infrastructure. Anything that has to do with voice under CIC, SIP server, Pure Cloud, uh, um, has been you know, audio codes un underneath. As some of you are already using us. Um, so we, we have a, a quite a full agenda. Um, the, the first item is we're trying to give you some perspective from what we've seen in the market to try to reduce the chances that you would um, stumble across technical challenges. There are always technical challenges. If somebody tells you that SIP or, or VoIP uh, is simple, just don't believe them. Uh, there's always issues, but we're trying to give you some perspective on how to reduce the technical issues. Um, num number two, um, we uh, have a special special solution for work at home agents. We see a trend in the market that there are more and more people working from home, either whatever it's unified communication or contact center agents. Um, it's became a little bit easier to implement it than it used to be, so we'll talk about that. Um, Whereabout you see has two use cases, uh, agent, agent phones, uh, click to call, so we touch those and we have demos and uh, customers that can will speak with us today and, and share their experiences. Um, and again, if we have time, we'll get to the chatbot to voice bot conversion. Um, any questions you have for us, we're at the booth downstairs. So without further ado, so <coughs> what we've seen over the years uh, is that I think the, 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 so the, the perspective that IT has is a little bit different from the business, right? So the business is asking for um, artificial intelligence, uh, predictive routing, uh, all the new stuff, and, and um, according to IDC research from 2018, 50% of the budget is actually in the business hands. And the business is asking IT to implement, and IT has more applications, it's more complicated, less people, less budget, and still required to do very, very complex things. Um, now, I, I think, Peter, you told me that this is the US. I actually insist that this is actually European, because the, the Eiffel Tower was given as a gift by France to the US. So this actually is a European design. Um, so in Cisco, if you look at Cisco or Aviam, in, in, in past, you know, I, I maybe I added the Lucent, right, it, and Siemens, right, Unified today, uh, you got one handshake. It's, it was, it's, it's a, uh, one solution, and if you have a technical issue, you call and, and, and uh, try to get help from one company, or hopefully one individual. It's no longer the case. If you look at the Microsoft, Genesis, other, providers today, it's more of an open architecture. So it, it, you have more choices, but it also has more technical challenges. Um, so there are a lot of options out, out there in terms of components and infrastructure. The question is, how do you quickly implement? Um, how do you quickly successfully implement them and have less technical issues on day one and day two, right? Um, and during production, I think it's the most uh, uh, most challenging uh, and important period. Um, so we, we, we've seen a situation that customers are buying all kinds of equipment, and even system integrators, right, resellers. And in the lab, it's working. But when you get to production, it's a bit different. A different environment, the network constantly changing. People are touching the routers, the switches, the firewalls. It's never a constant environment, and you, you're hoping to have a contact center running for 10, 15 years. There, there's always changes and, and always challenges, so you need to be prepared for it, not to think that it won't, it won't happen. And then the main question is, uh, what are you gonna call when you have a technical issue, right? So I'll, I'll share with you some examples. Um, um, so you need to coordinate uh, 
software releases, right? If, if, if you have um, session border controllers from one company, phones from another company, uh, voice quality monitoring, there's a lot, lo lots of options in the market. And you have the contact center platform and you have the UC platform. Uh, so you, you need to manage a lot of vendors and, and that introduces um, risks and, and unknown. Uh, um, so support teams, right? We spoke about that. And w one of the things that we, we've encountered uh, with a very large customer with 3,000 seats, five data centers, they had a technical issue and um, it's actually delay on the voice. So delay, you're not sure where it's coming from in the network. The problem wasn't the technical issue. The problem was to bring the voice quality monitoring company that found it, the SBC company, the Genesis, um, Audipus provided the phone, so we, we, we've been on the call, and of course when we, so just to coordinate the conference call, took a week, or, or, and, and uh, then of course, some of the other vendors said, no, it's not us, you know, bring us, bring more, more proof. It took a month and a half to uh, get rid of the delay on the voice for a production financial company, so, the challenges are more complicated than just the technology. Um, so, the, the, you, even if you have a solution and it, it's in the lab, it's going to evolve, it's going to change. There are upgrades, more features, and then the question is whether one component is synchronized with the evolution of the other, and whether it would still be working. Um, for example, the, the Citron service provider, it's certified now, Maybe you move to a def different service provider. Is it still certified? Um, the future of the products also is something that needs to be uh, taken into consideration, whether it supports newer technologies, newer platforms that we're going to talk about to them, uh, cloud architecture, um, uh, WebRTC, and uh, work at home agents that we're going to cover, um, Network readiness assessment and management system. Again, if you have disparate products from different vendors, you might have many management systems, and now you need to integrate them. Or you have many screens to look at when you're managing a problem. So manageability is really key when you're rolling out the contact center solution. And being able to monitor the network for uh, voice quality issues, technical issues, um, because they, they, they probably would happen, and you just need to be prepared for them. Some examples of issues that are across the board and you don't really know where it's happening from our delays, um, a dropped calls, um, one-way audio, um, and, and of course uh, bad voice quality or voice quality degradation. So what we're going to um, talk about today, at least, you know, that, that we are those products are being resold by Genesis on Genesis Paper, and um, our partners are either sourcing them from, from distribution or from Genesis. Um, and we're speaking about the voice infrastructure, so sometimes uh, those are hard phones, some do, sometimes those are WebRTC uh, um, soft phones that we demonstrate today as, as endpoints. Um, a management system, SPCs, gateways, and professional services to put all this together. And again, it's all provided uh, through Genesis, via Genesis, and under Genesis Care. Cloud or on-premise, on the platforms, doesn't matter which platform. Questions so far? I know I'm running a little bit, a bit quickly because we have a lot of content. So this is one slide about a work at home agent. So that, again, a, a growing trend. We know in the past we've seen X1 from Avaya and Cisco routers in agent houses. Um, all kinds of scenarios and, and, and many, many challenges on um, deploying work at home agents. The same technology that you've seen before also supports that there's nothing else to add to it. It's the same phones, the same SPCs, uh, the same management system. Um, what we've done, we've implemented the compression algorithm that WebRTC is using, it's called Opus. We've implemented it in the phones and the SPCs. It's the most resilient compression algorithm for network impairments. If you think about WhatsApp, if you're making a call on WhatsApp, or in the past, uh, you know, in the past, you're still using Skype. Uh, Skype is using a coder called Silk, and Silk is part of Opus, right? But this is what people are using when they're really calling relatives overseas. Uh, when I'm using the phone over here and calling the US, I'm using WhatsApp, all right? The voice quality is much better. And it is because of this compression algorithm called Opus. Now, Opus by itself, 
we thought it's not enough and we've augmented it and added to it um, capability. So we, we are measuring the network every 100 millisecond between the agent house and between the phone and the session border controller. And we change the compression algorithm uh, based on the network conditions. Um, so we, we measure uh, latency, uh, the MOS score, uh, GTER, packet loss. Um, so in addition to changing the bitrate of the, of the compression algorithm, we also add the packet loss concealment, um, forward error correction, a lot of other mechanisms to mitigate the network impairments. And we get to even up to 30% packet loss, you don't hear any impairments on the, on the voice, which is very, very rare in the industry. Um, there's no need, so, so that, that's dealing with the internet. Uh, for security, there's no need for the routers in the house or VPN because we use TLS as RTP. So there, there is security inherent in SIP and there's no need to add VPN which is difficult to manage and add more uh, in, in voice issues because of double encryption. So TLS as RTP, no need for the routers. Uh, the management system that manages the SPCs and the phones also provide voice quality monitoring for both every five seconds during live calls. So if the agent calls you and she tells you I can't, I couldn't hear the, this morning anything and I had a lot of issues, you at least you have information on, on what to track, where to start, what, what may have caused it and, and how to approach it. You're not blind to the situation. Um, and it's all stored in the database for several years so you have historical information including uh, why a call was dropped, uh, you know, is it, is it the carrier, is it the agent, is it in between? Um, we monitor the switches along the way as well, uh, a layer three. Um, so lots of tools to, to mitigate it um, and, and, and manage the phones remotely because the phones are in the house, you can't really get to it. There is a reverse proxy on the SPC that allows, you, allows the phones to reach out to the management system remotely. So it's a unique solution using the same components that uh, any contact center would use anyhow, right? It's a session board controller or a phone. Um, any questions about work at home? Well, maybe I'm speaking uh, too slow. <laughs> so, WebRTC, right, our third topic, and uh, soon we'll get to the demo. So, um, two use, case, use cases for uh, WebRTC, right? Uh, first of all, again, as I mentioned before, on WhatsApp and other applications, they are all using WebRTC behind the scenes today. And, and according to you know our experience, it's working really well compared to alternatives. Um, I, I'll skip. I mean, what WebRTC is, I think, is pretty obvious. But the, the difference is. So let's talk a, a little bit about click to call and then about a, agent phones, right? It's two different, completely different use cases. So if, if you think about click to call. Think about you sitting in the house as a consumer and you would like to call your bank and you have a billing question. So instead of dialing and waiting for the IVR and going through the tree on the IVR, uh, you basically have a, it's called visual IVR, it's a drop down menu. And you go through the menus um, and you select billing. And now you get a click to call button. So instead of you as a user having to take your phone and, and dial a number and find a number, you just click. So better customer experience. When the phone uh, when the phone call is being made, it's high definition voice. Again, it's using Opus. So it doesn't have to be limited to the PSTN network, which is narrow band. It's wide band, the audio quality is like music, so it's higher quality. Again, more resilient to network impairments. Um, there's no uh, fees for the carrier because it's over the internet. So uh, uh, you don't pay the minutes for the carrier. Um, there is contextual information because it's on your web server. When the, a customer clicked, the button is actually on your web server and you know what pages that customer was before because there is an ID, right, for the customer. Uh, it's even okay with GDRP to have an ID for an interaction. Don't, you don't have to store the information. If she uh, logged in, then you know more details about her um, because as a customer. But even if she didn't log in, you still have the metadata from the server on which web pages she, she has been on. Um, and, and when we bring it in the data, into the data center, we bring it down to, to SIP. So SIP server or CIC would look at it as a regular SIP call. There's zero difference. It, it, and start server collects the information. Um, again, CIC for statistics, doesn't matter which platform it is, it looks like a regular SIP call. 
So the, the, the contact center doesn't even know that it's an, it's, it was a WebRTC based interaction. Um, if, if you go to more sophisticated, of course, scenarios, then you can add video. This can run on the iOS or Android, so you can use it for, um, for, for your mobile devices, right? So it, it can be even richer than that uh, concept. But this is the, um, the, key, the, key, uh, the key aspects. And there's nothing to download for the customer uh, in the house. There's nothing to download. It's, it's part of Google Chrome or, or Mozilla. And, and even Edge now is actually adding Chrome services uh, to, to, to Edge. Um, in terms of an endpoint, so the, the benefits are relatively simple. There's no phone to manage, no upgrades. It's all part of the browser, right? So it's easier, good voice quality, simple to, sim much simpler to install in a soft phone compared to a soft phone. Um, it's, it's simpler to install. I think I covered most of it, right? I don't want to waste time. I'll, I'll just add one, one thing. So we, we are providing the SDK and the um, um, widget for, for the button. And again, system integrators like we have right now in the room are using this in order to build an integration with, uh, with the Genesis platform. Uh, we have solutions for any, any of the, I would call it five platforms, right? Pure Engage, Pure Engage Cloud, Pure Connect, Pure Connect Cloud, and Pure Cloud. Now, Pure Cloud has an, an, an endpoint based on WebRTC, which is really awesome. Um, Pure Engage Cloud also has a few customers on, on a solution, but uh, there's, uh, I believe we can scale to higher numbers uh, and densities. Um, and the solution that we offer is secure because it's inside the SBC. Our WebRTC gateway is inside the SBC. So it's already included the town server, the town server, and it's like behind the firewall. So it's not in the DMZ. It's not exposed to the denial of server attack. And with that, I think we'll switch to our partners.